Across America, there are thousands of underwater worlds no one has ever seen. Behind 8,000 dams, entire towns, factories, and mines are flooded. Their secrets frozen in time, their treasures shrouded in mystery. No one has had the skill or balls to investigate these ghost towns until we came along. The ghost town divers trap down the legends on the land. Happy birthday, look at this. This is your real piece of Americana. You find the answers in the water. I found a box. Get out of here. Big box. It's dangerous, even deadly. Guys, be careful about this car. It could go over any second. But the payoff can be huge. Cha-ching, we find three of these guns in mint condition. We're looking at 75 grand on the top end. We'll follow the mystery as deep as it may go. Whatever it is that's down there, I want to find it. We're going to bring things back to the surface for monetary value and historical value. There's 8,000 stories out there for us to dive into. A time capsule from the 30s in Arkansas. Jesse James lost treasure in Kentucky. The Cold War era missile silo, and no one's ever been down there. Our team is literally the best dive team in the world. What we do, it would just kill somebody within the first few minutes. They're like Navy SEALs, bald and a little bit older, but these guys can kick ass. The training creates the team. The team creates the brotherhood. You. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's gentlemen. Fun. Yeah. Good job. What we uncover down there will blow people away. If it's down there, we'll find it, and you can take that to the bank, hopefully. Hey, guys, I think I found something. Our next mission, the Brownstone Quarry, Portland, Connecticut. The brownstones taken out of here is what you can still find standing in a number of what they call brownstone buildings. This shot here can give you the greatest perspective on how big the place is because these tiny specks in here are people. You didn't drag us all the way here to look at freaking pictures. What's the deal? What are we looking at? The Brownstone Quarry was flooded by the Connecticut River in 1937, and it has been underwater ever since. What we're doing here, we've got an interesting story about stolen Thompson submachine guns, right? The famous Tommy gun. Local mafia steals these guns. Feds are gonna move in to raid. They gotta get rid of them fast, and we think they might be down here. Oh, it's f***ing awesome. Because those are worth a lot of money these days. A good condition, Thompson's could be worth twenty to $25,000 a piece. The diving part of it, cold water in the 30s, cables. There's um, barbs or steel structures sticking out of this mud, so we need to be careful. Deep, dark, dangerous, perfect. Yeah. Ready to go. I'm glad it's you guys going to down, not me. <laughs> We've got to do a little bit of investigation on the top before we let you guys get into the water. We're going to narrow it down so we're not searching the entire place. You guys get the gear ready. Me and George are going to the scene of the crime trying to get the intel done. The rumor is that the guns are stolen from an armory. We pull up on the armory, we walk down the street, and it's an inn, a bar, and, you know, a small restaurant. We meet with the manager of this hotel, which has taken the building over. Uh, we're looking into a story that may end at this brownstone quarry, but we believe begins here with uh, a robbery of certain automatic weapons. I could sense that he maybe wanted to tell us something and knew a little bit more than he was letting on. Guys, look, you didn't hear this from me. As soon as somebody starts whispering to me, I know that something good is going to happen. People used to come in here all the time, guys that were in the armory that used to talk about stories. You would hear rumors. One of the stories that we've heard is right. about these stolen, missing guns. Right, rumors start piling on rumors. It's got to be fact. You I heard the guys right. mention Thompson guns, Thompson yeah. machine guns, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah Tommy guns. Your, your typical 30s Thompson. gangster type yeah. of weapon. You use right. them in World War II. Yeah. Well, we got to get our hands on one. That's what we got to do now. From what I thought was a dead end, it went back. We're back on track. Ed and George went off to do a little investigating and uh, left Trace and I uh, off to prepare the equipment. Uh, hood, boots, gloves, tanks, rags, PC, weight. For me, what excites me is how we're going to pull off the dive, what equipment we're going to use. It's like going to Vegas. You're going to roll the dice. My job is to try to do is try to figure out how to cheat death. So you know these Thompsons aren't legal in Connecticut anymore. Sure. Strict laws on him, so I got a guy that's bringing up a gun. Ed's got a colorful past, to say the least. And he sets up a deal where we can meet this guy who's got a real Thompson machine gun, so we can see what we're actually looking for. You know, take a look at it, see what it might look like after 50 years in the water. I'm a little taken back because 
Ed's got a gun, and we're meeting a guy who knows a guy who's got guns. I know George was about to shit a brick. I'm the only schmuck without a gun. Oh, man, happy birthday. Look at this. This is your real piece of Americana. Gangsters went crazy for these. This pistol grip, this drum, 50 mag in here. This is a piece of history, man. This is what they call the Chicago typewriter. You know how many guys you could take down with this? This is Al Capone right here in my hands. St. Valentine's Day Massacre, this is it. And this is a, a round that they would have used in this weapon back exactly. then? Exactly. Well, you ask him, you ever hear anything about this robbery? I heard some stories. What kind of stories? I, I don't really want to go into detail, but I heard some names. Wanna, name? Want to drop a name? Annunziato. George just flares up. I'm like, you know, he's all, Annunziato, Annunziato. I'm like, oh, you know, what's Annunziato? He's this made guy from Hartford area, and he's trying to break from the New York mob and the Boston mob. And I've heard this story of him running the show here in the 50s. If we can get tie these guns to him, that could prove that he's trying to break away from these guys, and this is the firepower that he's going to need to do that. Yeah. All right, so I want to take uh, this bullet with us, if you don't mind. No, that's all right. That's all right. right. Yeah. I'd like to take the piece with me, too, but that's I'm sure not you're happen. not going to let it slide. You know, we get a name, so we call some cops friends of ours. So Nunziato, tell me a little bit more about him. The guy was a career criminal. My dad was a cop here in town for about 30 years. Right. He pinched that guy three or four times. He was absolutely convinced that he had something to do with that armory robbery. Right. And those Thompsons. Really? Yeah. Now never he, could find him. Never could find him. But he really believed that when the FBI was closing in on him, he pitched those Thompsons into this quarry. This is the only road coming down into this place. Right. That's the only entrance over there. Salvatore Nunziato disappears in 1979. And for the most part, the story disappeared with him. You want my personal opinion? Yeah. I think Annunziato might be down there with his Tommy guns. <laughs> so no one's looked since? No one they didn't send anybody in? Divers? It's been too dangerous to put people in the water here. It's cold, it's dark, it's deep. Walking in there when Monty opened that gate with the boys and coming to the edge of that quarry, it was awe-striking. I mean, it was just, like, awesome. It looks like you're like 100 feet in the air, you know, like the drop from there to the water looks to be like way over 100 feet. It was really impressive. We knew that the search area was going to be like enormous and we were going to be like looking for a needle and a stack of needles. We're looking for ammo, we're looking for magazines, or we're looking for any piece of these weapons. At the edge of that cliff, everybody knew that this was kind of the end of the land version of this. I think, uh, I think it's time to get in the water, guys. It is. How much in the 70? 33. How much in the arm? 29. This water that we're going to be in, cold, like ice, right? Your ability to survive there, very short time. So we're wearing dry suits, electric undergarments, just trying to keep ourselves alive. You know, we get quiet, we start to focus. We really depend upon one another down there. You know, their lives depend upon me, my life depends upon them. Once you hit the water, I mean, it's real. And, you know, there, it, it's not a game, and it's serious. First couple of minutes of the dive, we try to do a little exploration. Let's do a visual. All right, guys, keep your eyes shut. There's hazards everywhere down here. It was like you entered the enchanted dark forest. Trees hanging over the edge, branches kind of wiggling out, wanting you. Cars teetering, this big four-door car precariously balanced on the edge of a cliff. Guys, be careful about this car. It could go over any second. When I'm on the surface, I can't see what they see. I can't feel what they feel. They've got to give me the communication to let me know exactly what they're doing. Bob, we okay down there? Bob, let me know. You guys all right? Being on top, it's Ajita just waiting to know what's going on. There's a box over here. What kind of box are we talking about? Give me a size description. The most interesting piece they come up with is this old fire extinguisher that's circa about 1928. This is, this is the time frame we're looking for. People pay good money for these things. I'm thinking these fire extinguishers are in pretty good shape. The Thompsons could be in that good of shape as well. Second dive, we go down, we take scooters this time. We decided to use some of the technology that we had to help in the search, so we put the metal detector in the water. hitting a ledge that we figure where these things could have dropped, could have floated out a little bit and dropped to a ledge. 
start dropping the metal detector in, getting pings here, getting pings there. And the visibility is starting to drop a little bit, and all of a sudden the metal detector goes off. Reach your hand down and come up with like what I felt were almost gravel, and I bring it up out of the, the smoke of the silt, and I start kind of wiggling it with my hands, and the silt's just drooling away. They still don't know what it is because the visibility's so poor. So they all surface at the same time, they come up, they're excited, they've got a handful of muck and some shiny in there, and I want to give it to me, let's see what we got. Couldn't see anything, I'm going back and forth, Edna are digging in there, and Edna, we're digging and he came up with these bullets. Guys, think, man? oh! It's a long, oh, it's a long baby, straight, man. this is incredible. They're awesome. These guys are coming up with bullets. This is the 45 caliber round we got from our gun expert. This is exactly the match. They pulled this one out of the water. As you can see, pull them together. They're exactly alike. This means we're almost there. It's somewhere right around there. The odds of it not being the Tommy guns we're looking for, it's got to be astronomical. Salute. Great day, gentlemen. Good job. Hope you guys are looking for something.